Hi, you're welcome to another Clada Art class. Today we're going to take a look at an illustrator. An illustrator from what? Of what book? Hmm. Some children in our school are focusing on mini beasts and um, bugs and insects um, and such things for the last couple of weeks. So that's one of the reasons why I'm focusing on these kind of creatures. And what book do they come from? So can you identify who this is? What kind of creature it is? It's got six legs. It's green. It's got a noisy little tail on the end. This guy here has eight legs, three parts to its body. This one is not so easy to tell. I've got another picture of this character. Might make it easier for you to tell who it is. Here we go. There she is. She's actually a she in the book. Have you remembered the book yet? Have you figured out what the book is yet? Have you figured out who this guy is? He's a boy who went on an adventure with all of these mini beasts and these mini beast characters. And oh, hold on. That is the name, oh, sorry, that is the guy who created these drawings, created the illustrations for this book. Here's another clue for the book. This man's name is Quentin Blake. And Quentin Blake made the illustrations for the book we're talking about. Who? What art writer worked with Quentin Blake when making his books? One last look at a couple of two more characters. What kind of creatures are they? Hmm. I wonder. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. This is a cricket. This is a spider. This is Mrs. Miss Ladybird, but Miss Ladybird is also this person. This person is James. James went on an adventure in a giant peach with the ladybird, the cricket, the spider, the centipede, and the earthworm. This is Mr. Centipede with his glasses and his hat. And this is Mr. Worm with his cool shades and his hat. All of these characters were created by Roald Dahl, but illustrated by Quentin Blake. Um, we are going to take a look at making some drawings of these creatures now. So I'm going to show you two videos, uh, three actually, three short videos, um, on how to create drawings of these characters or similar type of characters using no paint, no pencil, no crayon, no marker. No charcoal, no oil pastel. In fact, using none of those items, just mud. How are we going to do it? Let's take a look. First, this is just a little bit of a picture of what you're going to need to do it. All you're going to need is a toilet roll holder. Uh, a couple of cereal boxes or even one cereal box will do you. It's the big part of the cereal box, that big rectangle that comes out of the cereal box that will become your page. And these little bits that are the flaps from your cereal box will become your tools to draw with. And you're also going to use the toilet roll to draw with. You can also use a stick and mud. And now I'm going to show you the video of how you're going to do that. That's the second video. Here we go. So we're going to chop up the cereal box, any cereal box. Take off all the flappy bits. So again, like I was saying in the first picture, that big rectangle in the cereal box is your page. Rectangle. You should get two of those in every cereal box as your pages. You're going to use all your flappy bits for your drawing tools. You have like a whole pile of pieces to draw with, pieces to draw on. Okay. So today we're looking at the 
illustrations of Quentin Blake from the story of James and the Giant Peach. What we're going to draw with today is muck mixed with water. So all you have to do is take some muck out of the garden. You could even take a little bit of a flower bit. Just fingers are perfectly okay. fine. So I'm going to start off by drawing the centipede, I'm oh sorry, grasshopper from James and the Giant Peach. So I take up a piece of book and all I'm going to do is drag it down the cart. That's more or less the body of a grasshopper. The grasshopper has two pointy bits at the bottom. They're the bits that make the noise their legs together. We're going to use a toilet roll holder to make his head. Only because it lets us go roundy roundy, that's all. So there's his head. And then we use the, the again the cardboard pieces to make legs. Now a grasshopper, well this is getting soft now. No good when it gets soft, so turn it over. That's why you need lots of these guys. Best so grasshopper. Then you can come well, along okay. with a stick and give it a little feet. You can do the whole drawing with a stick if you like. Eyes. When you leave blobs of muck on the drawing and then the drawing dries, the blobs of muck leave a really good mark, so it's okay. To, so those blobs are good to leave for the very distinct spots that you want to make. I've kind of run out of room. It's good to leave yourself room at the top of your page. Hmm. So there he is, a little bit like a grasshopper used in James and the Giant Peach. He could do with a couple of wings. He's missing his wings. Next one, I'm going to do a ladybird. Now the ladybird's going to have to come from the next video. We have to pause this. So let's get to your next video to show you the ladybird. Here we go. Oh. She comes. Toilet roll holder. Okay, so this ladybird is on one side. She's a bit one sided ladybird. So ladybirds have six legs. This ladybird will only three. Let's make it only zero on one side. Again, this has got a bit soft. Just turn it over to the other side. Lots of toilet rolls. Now, obviously, you can draw anything you like with mud, and you can use any equipment that you like. We've just done an example of using the illustrations of James and the Giant Peach. Because we're really interested in the creatures. The cardboard dragging is better for making lines. There she goes, she's got three legs. I actually think that ladybird in James and the Giant Peach was a lady who had a little handbag. 
Hmm. You could try adding a hand back. Common ladybird in Ireland is a seven spot ladybird. Number one. Now, when these drawings dry, the big lumps of clay come away, the big lumps of muck, but the marks stay. So there are the videos on how to attack a couple of illustrations. Now you can use the mud as I said to do anything. The other thing that, that's important for you to know is that you can also use the pictures later. Sorry, I was just going to bring up um, the ladybird. You can always use these pictures later when they dry, add colour to them. So you could come along with a bit of a wash of red on the back of the ladybird if you'd like to, um, after you've left your mud drawings to dry. Maybe I'll put up another video of that when my mud drawings are dry, um, just to have a look and see what other options you have. Um, don't forget the mud is something you can use your fingers, use with your fingers, use with your hands, use any sticks, cardboard, anything you like to, to draw with. The cardboard is better for than paper to draw on with the mud because the mud needs a stronger piece of paper for you to be able to pull and drag. Uh, 